This evening, we're going to discuss um, what are my thoughts about uh, peak carbon, because I'm, first of all, not, uh, unfortunately, the experienced user up to now, but uh, I'm well known because I'm interested in innovative treatment in oncology. And uh, most of you uh, know me uh, as a guy in Europe introducing you a lot of new implants and new techniques. So I thought one day I was focused on peak carbon. So I want to uh, share with you my thoughts in the, these three uh, areas, the, the spinal instrumentation, the long nails and the platelet synthesis. Uh, we have already heard some uh, advantages um, of uh, P carbon, uh, I think one of the most striking is the uh, uh, the uh, superb uh, elasticity <coughs> modulus, um, the fatigue strength, which is um, something we haven't been able to reach ever in metal. Um, the bending strength is not that superb, but in relation to the fatigue strength, yes. And for us, uh, especially the young ones here, um, cold welding is the pain in the ass if you want to remove uh, titanium plate synthesis. You know there's a, there's a striking uh, sentence that uh, placing in titanium osteosynthesis is far more easy than removing it. Um, the, I think most of you can, can underline this, um, but you don't have these problems with uh, P-carbon. And uh, especially in the um, oncology, um, we, ha we are hampered by the fact that the visibility um, is uh, uh, less in, uh, in the, the metal uh, osteosynthesis. Um, of course, um, the uh, stainless steel is not that often used anymore in our country. It's routinely titanium, but uh, with the introduction of P-carbon, uh, there's really, I think, a new chapter. Another advantage which I already mentioned are the stress risers. Um, and uh, I'm really um, uh, hoping that in the future when we're going to remove a, a large um, soft tissue tumor when we have to, to strip the femur with the polyosteum that we routinely can place um, and a p-carbon nail in order to prevent fracturing. I think that that is something that could be the routine uh, treatment uh, in, a, in a couple of years. Uh, of course uh, we have our problems with heart failure, especially in our patient group where you expected a delayed union because of radiation or in combination with chemotherapy. Uh, often our patients have to wait six to nine months for a proper fusion. So um, in those times uh, we have a high risk of failure and um, uh, we think that uh, with uh, P-carbon that could be um, very positively changed uh, and um, <coughs> as always the debate um, are you sure Professor Dijkstra there is no local recurrence um, when I put in an implant and we have our MRI scan after six months 12 months 24 months nobody knows for certain and I think with uh, uh, the peak technology, uh, technology we are able to do so there's one disadvantage um, we have a very large patient group with fibrous dysplasia, with uh, uh, this morph uh, along the bone bones, and we are not able up to now to, to use uh, a P carbon, but maybe in the future there is a new technique uh, to produce P carbon, and maybe we are able to do with something like 3D printing in P carbon. We, who knows? But up to now, I think it's not an option. Um, so, if there is innovation, uh, I like uh, as an academic guy, it should be hand in hand with uh, research and although uh, there are some interesting um, publications which have been uh, uh, showed earlier uh, I think um, the, in the oncology especially in the oncology uh, part it could be um, extended uh, one of the things uh, we've seen um, is that if you compare uh, with the phantom testing uh, a titanium plate with uh, p-carbon that it has a really advantage in <coughs> regarding the visibility um, and uh, to stress, uh, or, or more or less to summarize, why I think uh, oncology surgeon should be uh, familiar with the P-carbon uh, is this case with a male of 38 years old, uh, which was diagnosed with the juxtacortical osteosarcoma of the distal femur. And uh, you see that um, um, 
uh, here very close to the joint, you will have this uh, uh, very juxtacortical laying uh, high grade tumor. So we did a computer assist um, resection where we try to save as much as possible uh, of the remaining distal femur. Uh, but uh, although we had our computer navigation, um, unfortunately we had a fracture, uh, but I was glad the plate was there. Um, and so we, we um, decide not to use um, our routine double plating for the distal femur, uh, but try the uh, uh, P-carbon. Uh, although uh, a lot of screws, but this is uh, an allograft and, and it put with two compression screws and uh, on the other side the, uh, the lung plate. And uh, the reason why I uh, choose for this was I presume because the patient was still ongoing with chemotherapy that there will be a delayed union and that's also happened. Uh, unfortunately, there was also an infection uh, because of its chemotherapy. Uh, a couple of weeks uh, after implantation, we continued with uh, IV antibiotics. Uh, we had the irrigation, uh, but we uh, preserved the plate. We not remove anything of, uh, of the screws, only the two screws of the, com uh, of the compression <coughs> of the other graft. You can see here, and you see already some bone formation after six months, and now after nine months, you see there is a um, fusion at the uh, lateral side and the patient is uh, full weight bearing without any complaints. I think this case is really uh, an excellent example why uh, we think that peak carbon is something we should integrate in our daily practice. Um, because we had to wait a long time before the chemotherapy period is ended and in those times we had a lot of problems with uh, the standard plating. Another uh, first interesting patient group is the gondar sarcoma group or the low-grade gondar sarcoma group. is a patient group where you just correct the, uh, the tumor uh, and uh, we routinely use prophylactic osteosynthesis in order to prevent a pathological fracture. Um, of course not every ACT or low-grade gondar sarcoma uh, should be treated like this, but if there is a, a, a progressive uh, size or it changes on the MRI, we think um, that's the best treatment uh, in, uh, today. And um, we like to see that we have a better um, uh, visibility of, of, the, of this patient group because if you played if you're going to plate with titanium, it's very, very difficult to uh, see local recurrence. And actually, we have seen last week a patient which was seen already for two years. And two years long, there was a local recurrence. But now there was a clever resident who said, OK, I already see for two years there was some small spot just next to the plate. And, and with the MRI, with, uh, with a different direction, we were able to distinguish this local recurrence. So I think, uh, yes, in those patients we expect local recurrence uh, after cryotypes. It's a very um, uh, important edit, uh, addition to our um, endotorium. Uh, we enrolled uh, six uh, patients now in uh, our, uh, our um, uh, prospective study. Um, and uh, hopefully uh, we are uh, successful uh, within one and a half year to have the complete group uh, filled. Um, this is an example and you see uh, the nice uh, fusion. Um, we have no experience up to now with the femoral metast uh, metastatic uh, disease, but um, uh, I expect that um, with the change from uh, titanium to um, uh, to a uh, carbon that we could reduce uh, this problem um, with with the prolonged survival of uh, our patient group uh, we see that there is a high risk of a breakage of the titanium nail after nine months and um, uh, we have seen already this for years and although I try to uh, persuade the uh, uh, striker company to routinely make thicker uh, proximal uh, parts of uh, the uh, uh, gamma nail, um, uh, they are not interested. So we have to change our philosophy from titanium to p-carbon. And I think 
uh, that that is if you expect a pa your patient to uh, live longer than uh, six months, um, it's, it's really something to consider to use uh, titanium. And one of the I think um, um, important um, results we have um, embedded for you as a clinician group um, is uh, we designed an app, and in those app. Uh, you are able to uh, predict the survival of the patient with uh, bone metastatic disease of the lung bones. And in this app, there's also an, a recommendation what is the best treatment. And it could be interesting in the near future that we, uh, we, we have been published in, in the effort uh, journal uh, that we could adjust this and said, okay, if this patient is living for longer than six months, you should consider to use peak carbon instead of the routine titanium nail. Um, we, uh, over a year, we are using um, uh, intermediary nailing for um, a patient with uh, metastatic disease in lung bones around, around 30 per, per year. And of course, um, that should be, could be, and should be more centralized to have a uh, better outcome. And especially when you, when you want to introduce new um, techniques like uh, P-carbon, uh, uh, it's 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 very important to collaborate, and um, so um, we had a grant uh, of a half a million of our Dutch uh, Cancer Society to improve uh, local treatment in patients with met bone metastatic disease in the lung bones, uh, and we uh, apply uh, to use uh, uh, the peak carbon uh, uh, nail um, to compare this. For, to the routinely titanium nail, uh, and the endpoints of the study are the complication rate for the first two years, uh, and of course we want also to show that there is a better function after uh, two and three months, um, but that will be, I think, hard to, um, uh, to underline in the end. I think the complication rate will be the most important endpoint. It's a multi-center, and we hope to start uh, this summer. Um, uh, Another point is uh, the advantages in radiotherapeutic uh, treatment. Um, if we are using carbon implants, uh, we have, I think, a better um, uh, local control with, uh, with radiation. Uh, there are not that many studies uh, showing that uh, you will have a better or worse outcome. And nowadays, we, uh, we just tend to uh, provide radiation after implantation of, of osteoarthritis or an endoprothesis just based on the, the guess of the, of the physician. There's no um, guideline saying that you have to use it um, uh, routinely, but maybe if we can show that uh, with um, P-carbon implants that you have a better local control that could alter um, these guidelines. So in the spine, um, with uh, the introduction of uh, uh, the um, uh, metal uh, radiation uh, like uh, proton beam and uh, carbon beam, I think that, uh, that there will be a huge um, a swift uh, in the use of P carbon in the next few years because in every, every, nearly every Western country there are arising uh, P, uh, proton beam uh, radiation centers and also in Holland there are already two nearly finished. One has started in Groningen uh, two months ago, and uh, we are opening uh, in Delft uh, after the summer. Um, so um, yes, peak carbon uh, will be the new trend in order to have a better treatment of um, uh, bone metastatic disease. Um, for the visualization, of course, will be better. Uh, and um, hopefully, we will reduce the uh, loosening of the screws and screw breakage. Um, and we think that we could early show this uh, by the use of uh, Röntgen stereometric uh, grammatory. Um, this is a, um, a, a technique which has been also introduced with our department already more than 20 years ago. Uh, and we have an excellent uh, reputation uh, on that field um, because you can really, really, with minimal displacement, uh, are you able to predict that a new implant 
is a success or not in already the early years. So if you have a new technique and you are able to have displaced, you can show there is no displacement, this is directly related to the clinical outcome 10 to 15 years later. So that's, I think, one of the advantages of the use of uh, RSA in uh, clinical screws. Um, we have new techniques, um, not only with, uh, with these markers in the bone, but also uh, with a CT scan, we are uh, also able to use this, um, this very accurate technique of um, uh, measuring displacement. Um, what, what to do uh, with uh, the uh, displacement? We, we, we had just some, some small tests, we, a test done with uh, RSA in, uh, in our lab, and we showed that uh, this was a, a feasible technique uh, to follow <coughs> up. Uh, the, um, the pedicle screws, which are made uh, by a carbon fix, uh, and we think that um, uh, it should be uh, uh, a part of the routine use uh, if you start with uh, with this technique to show that in the long run that is um, a, a visible technique and a reliable technique. Um, in the end, if we see it in relation to a better outcome. Uh, uh, me, as a, a pelvic surgeon and a spine surgeon, I see really the benefit uh, of P-carbon in relation to a better oncological outcome. Uh, that's not only because of the radiolucency, but also about the better elasticity. <coughs> elasticity. Um, we have seen a couple of patients with uh, breakage of the osteosynthesis every year, and I presume when we have carbon fixed rods, that will be uh, I think something we only remember, but we're not uh, going to experience anymore. So that was just a short uh, summary of my thoughts, what I'd like to share with you.